Hello, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case number 27 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a balloon and crossable CTO. This is the dual injection, demonstrating a mid-LAD CTO. There is diffuse disease and calcification in the proximal vessel. There is a tapered proximal cap. The lesion is short, the occlusion is less than 20 millimeters, but heavily calcified. The distal vessel is of good quality, however, there is a branch at the distal cap, one branch that connects to the subacoidal collateral, and the other being the main LAD. There is this epicardial collateral, a Vucens collateral, coming from an acute marginal. And there's also epicardial collaterals coming from the PDA into the distal LAD. So to summarize, this is a patient with uh, an LAD CTO with a clear proximal cap, short length of occlusion, but heavy calcification, good size of the distal vessel, and uh, a contralateral epicardial collaterals that did not seem favorable for the retrograde approach, and that is why the plan was for undergrade wire escalation, and if that failed, undergrade dissection and re-entry. A Corsair catheter was advanced to the proximal cap, and then escalation was performed using the Pilot 200 and the Gaia second guide wire. However, those could not cross. Then a Hornet 14 guide wire did cross into this septal branch that connected with the epicardial collateral. Crossing into that vessel was confirmed in an orthogonal view. However, when a balloon was attempted to be advanced through the occlusion, we could not get this completed. The initial plan was actually to predilate and then use a twin pass to wire into the LAD to preclude the chance of losing access through the occlusion by pulling this wire back and redirecting. However, we could not advance any balloon through. Therefore, this is a balloon uncrossable lesion. The first step for those is typically using a threader or low-profile balloon, so we did use the rapid exchange threader, which however could not cross. Several 1.2 millimeter balloons did not cross either, and we finally did laser, this is actually the laser catheter, using multiple trains with 80-80 energy and fluency, however we did not do them with simultaneous contrast injection. And this is the proposed algorithm for approaching this balloon uncrossable occlusions. The first step being using a threader or a small balloon, potentially rupturing the balloon into the vessel, the so-called grenadoplasty, or balloon-assisted microdissection or BAM. The next step is to use different microcatheters, which would not do it in this case, like the Corsair or the Fine Cross, or potentially do the Carolino technique, which is injection of contrast through the microcatheter, or improve the support of the catheter by using a guideliner or another guide catheter extension, such as Gajilla, and anchor balloon strategies. The third line, which we did in this case, is use the laser, which does not require changing of the wire, in contrast to rotational therectomy, which does require change of the wire. And the last line is to go subintimally and try to modify the lesion from the subintimal space, or use the subintimal axis to perform subintimal distal anchoring. We did multiple dilations of the vessel proximal to the occlusion, since potentially this could uh, uh, be causing the problem with less traction and less force of the catheter. However, this did not help. And then tried to increase the guide catheter support, inserting a six French guide liner using a small balloon, essentially all the way to the proximal cap. However, despite doing that, we were unable to cross. And after almost two hours of attempts, we still could not cross the lesion. Therefore, we decided to completely change our strategy. We pulled the wire back, advanced the microcatheter as far as we could, and we did the Carlino technique, which essentially is administration of 0.5 cc's of contrast through the microcatheter, which actually seems to have some penetration. We do see some contrast penetration into the distal true lumen. We then tried to cross with the Pilot 200, in some cases, the contrast can create a microchannel through which the pilot wire can follow. However, this did not work. And then we use the Gaia second wire 
which did seem to follow a plane. But when contralateral injection was performed, it demonstrated that our Gaia second guide wire was actually in the subintimal plane. As shown before, however, subintimal crossing is actually one of the last resort therapies for treating those balloon and crossable occlusions, so we're actually happy for getting access to the subintimal space. We were able to deliver a stingray balloon and guide wire, and then performing re-entry with a stingray wire. We almost never use the stingray wire after we stick to advance it distally, but in this particular case, as you can see, the stingray entered the vessel proximal to the proximal marker and then rapidly went down the so-called stick and drive technique. So we did not want to remove it and use a polymer guide wire. This is the contralateral view on the REO showing good wire position. And this was actually confirmed with an LAO cranial projection showing good wire position as well. The guide wire was exchanged for a workhorse guide wire that also is selecting nicely the distal side branches, further confirming that we do have distal true lumen crossing. The lesion was predilated, and the great flow was restored. The remain flow into this large diagonal branch that was close to the distal cap, so that was an excellent thing. And then we also treated a first diagonal CTO that was easily crossed with undergrade wire escalation. After stents were placed, undergrade TIMI3 flow was restored both in the LAD as well as the diagonal branch. And the patient had a nice final angiographic result. The case took approximately three hours, 38 minutes of fluoroscopy at 2.9 gray with 420 ml of contrast, demonstrating that those balloon and crossable lesions can be fairly challenging to treat and require multiple strategies and multiple techniques. So what are the lessons from this case? The first lesson is that having an algorithm for approaching these lesions is important. This is one algorithm we use in our lab, which starts with the small balloons, then escalates to different microcatheters, strategies to improve the guide catheter support. The third line is using the laser or rotational therectomy if you are able to change the crossing wire with the rotational therectomy guide wire. And the fourth line is what was actually done in this particular case is crossing the lesion through subintimal space in this particular case with, case with undergrade dissection and reentry using the Carlino technique, then got subintimal, the reentry with the stingray guide wire, and that led to standing and good stand expansion. Thank you very much.